the problem behind Bible translations is not English. If you can come up with a better flowing English that is true to the original Greek manuscripts uh, behind the King James tradition, I would be thrilled. It's not English. The issue is what Greek text were you using? There are too many changes for me to sit back and say it doesn't matter. Hopefully from our first message about the inspiration of the Bible, you will now understand why. I believe the true author is the Holy Spirit. I believe this is the Word of God. I don't make it the Word of God by how I preach. If I yell or scream, oh, that must be really the Word of God. No. Or you quietly just refer to a verse. That isn't what makes it powerful. We, we need to understand that the Word of God in and of itself is power. Power to change your life. And through the work of the Holy Spirit, and produce the new birth. We are born again of an incorruptible seed of the Word of God which liveth and abideth forever. I am deeply disturbed that some of my wonderful friends in the ministry believe that Vaticanus and Sinaiticus are the best or the oldest or the most accurate as so many modern English translations have tried to promote and sell to us. The truth is that the Greek text, the majority of uh, usage, the Greek text for producing the King James Version of the Bible, is still, in my opinion, not that it's worth that much, the most reliable, and is based by and large upon the majority of manuscripts. I want to say to us all right now, may God give us all the wisdom we need to evaluate these matters and May we all have the kindness of the Lord to, toward those who may disagree with us. I want that, and I pray that you want it also. I love this book. If you want to put something on my epitaph, put, he loved the Bible, the whole Bible, and nothing but the Bible. I don't want to preach anything else I really don't want to know anything else. I find it incredibly difficult, whatever book study I'm doing, to get that done in one week's time to preach it again next week. And sometimes I'm preaching eight, ten times a week, and it's mind-boggling. My wife can tell you, she tries to get me out of the study. I thank God that I have never lost the joy of it. Sometimes I go down in the well too far, and people don't know where I went simply because I want to know the meaning of that word. And so I'm going to look at it through all of the history of Greek. Greek is huge, 32 million words. And it takes time. Hebrew becomes very difficult. I'm trying to write a book now. I was talking to Dr. Price about it. On Hosea, calling the prophet of mercy. I love that book. But the Hebrew is so difficult, it's fragmented. I wish like most of you would in reading a book, we had a sentence there, but no. And, and I don't even feel comfortable trying to figure out what the sentence is because I don't want to violate the verses that I read to you to begin with. I don't want to add to what is really the Word of God nor take away anything that is really the Word of the living God. Is everybody understanding me? That's what's wrong in the church of Jesus Christ today. With the use of multiple translations, we created a monster problem that we didn't think about when we started. We have allowed men, as uh, Jacob Prash so beautifully illustrated to us, to use eisegesis, reading into the text their own interpretation instead of being exegetical. Let the text say what it says, no matter if it hurts. Read God's Word because it's God's Word and not put your interpretation into the book. We have a conference here that some of us treasure greatly. I hope by your attendance you will, after it's over, say it was good to be there. We want you to know that this whole country, especially our churches, needs to return to the Bible, the whole Bible, and nothing but the Bible. I don't want to go to church. 
I don't want to go to church anymore and hear how I can get my act together. I never have. I'm still struggling with it. But as soon as I drop dead, it'll all be over. I don't want to go there and hear a preacher tell me about his view of things. I want to go to church and hear the Bible. I'd be satisfied if they read the Bible itself. At least we know that's when they're right. I think we're in big trouble. I don't think. I know we are. When you talk about prophecy, what have they done? They've left out vast portions of the Bible and told us it's not necessary to study it. Heresy is dominating our Christian culture like I couldn't have believed when I started 52 years ago preaching God's Word. A lot of the boys that I knew then so well, wonderful memories like Dr. J. Vernon McGee. I wonder what he'd be saying right now because he could get ticked. (laughs) But you get upset today about any of this heresy and people call you mean-spirited. We don't want to be mean-spirited, but we do want the truth. Thy word is truth, and the truth will set you free. And what we really are praying about as you leave this conference, there'll be a new commitment in your life to the study of the Bible, the whole Bible, and nothing but the Bible. Will you join me, please, in prayer? Father, how thankful we are for your word. And Lord, a lot of what we've said today is so inadequate. We've just scratched the surface. But hopefully we've been able to knock down a lot of opinions that have taken us away from the Bible, that have undermined people's confidence in the Bible, that have given us so many translations we don't know which is right. God, I pray that you will help us in the English world to be less arrogant and prideful, that our great goal would be to get the Word of God into all these languages and dialects, precious people who need to hear the truth of God's Word. We understand there's some 16,000 people groups who have never heard the gospel of our Lord Jesus. God, help us in this conference to return to loyalty, commitment, application, the preaching and teaching of the Bible. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you.